Hi folks, in this episode I'm going to talk about Nucleos. Um, it is another solution concept. Um, I think it has a very nice intuition, uh, but uh, from a technical point of view, calculating the Nucleos uh, payoff vector is, could be very, very uh, daunting uh, task. Um, so here's the definition. Uh, it's a bit uh, involved. Uh, let's let's uh, walk through every single detail slowly. So take any uh, coalitional game G with set of players N, the worth function V, and take any coalition S, which is a subset of N, and a payoff vector X. Remember the payoff vector has to be individual or rational and has to be uh, feasible. So we're going to define the notion of deficit or complain. All right, so this is the deficit or complain of some coalition X with respect to the payoff vector X. So how do we define it? Well, simple. Um, look at the worth of coalition S and then find the total sum of the payoff uh, this coalition is going to achieve under this payoff vector X take the difference, all right? So that difference is called complaint or deficit. Well, if they are the same, all right, that means D is equal to zero. And so this coalition actually achieves payoff, which is uh, equal to what's, uh, what, what it's worth. Well, if it is, however, a positive, actually positive, I'm sorry, if it is negative, well, that's brilliant. Uh, they are actually getting payoff much more than what this coalition is worth. I mean, uh, if this coalition stays alone by itself, excludes everybody else, well, then they couldn't achieve more than uh, what this payoff vector is offering them. So therefore, if the deficit is negative, well, actually, that's not a complaint. That's a good thing. Um, however, it's problem when the deficit is positive. If it is positive, it means the, 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 this coalition S could actually achieve higher payoff if they exclude everybody else and then form this coalition S by itself. All right, so the V of S is greater than this sum. This is what it means. This coalition does not want to be a part of grand coalition. So in a sense, if the complaint is positive for some coalition, well, then this payoff vector cannot be uh, stable. All right, so the, the, the deficit and stability are sort of related notions, and eventually we're going to come to that. Okay, well, next, once we define the deficit for each coalition for any given uh, payoff vector x, we define a 2 to the power n folded deficit vector. All right, we denote it by dx. It basically calculates the deficit of every single uh, coalition uh, that could be formed out of those n players, all right? So ds1x, ds2x, ds2 to the power nx. However, the order here matters. How so? Don't look at this part. It's just a mathematical description, but it basically says the following. Look at the deficit or the complaint of all the uh, coalitions, all right? And then here, the first number is the amount of complaint, the highest complaint, right? It doesn't matter from which coalition it's coming from, all right? We don't fix the coalitions. We first put the highest complaint, and then the second highest, and then the third highest, and at the end, the lowest complaint. Well, obviously, if two coalitions have the same level of complaint, it really doesn't matter whether you put it the first or the second, okay? So this is how we order the deficit vector. And this is very, very critical because I'm going to use this uh, deficit vector to define a binary relation, all right? So if you're clear about how to construct, well, well maybe let's pose here and work on some simple example, all right? Um, so, n is the set of players, 1, 
and 2. Remember, we kind of talked about this. V of 1, which is equal to V of 2, uh, was 5, and then V of 1, 2 is equal to uh, 20, right? So, out of these two players, how many coalitions can we have? Well, obviously the empty coalition, and then what else? Um, da -da 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 -da. Um, coalition of one player, player one, player two, and, you know, both players. So that's it. So there are four possible coalitions. Okay, so what is the worth of those coalitions? Well, you know, empty coalition gets zero, coalition one gets five, coalition, uh, you know, two only alone, five, but the real coalition of two players gets 20. All right, well, now I need to define a payoff vector x. Remember, let's define it 15, um, oops, five, which was not, uh, what was that? which was not uh, fair. And then there was y, um, 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 10, 10. So I'm going to calculate uh, this summation of xi and summation of yi, okay? For each coalition, all right? So what is the coalition, uh, the summation of, well, so here they're just zero, okay? Be, be, uh, let's be clear about it because you are summing out of, uh, all, you know, no players. So therefore, well, I just assign zero value there. Um, what about player one? So what is the player one's uh, take out here? It's 15. Okay. Um, yeah. Under X. Under Y, it is 10. Good. Player two's take here under X is 5. Under Y is 10. And then what is the take of uh, coalition one to? It's 20 in both. Agree? Yes. All right. Now I'm going to, uh, let me put X here. It is 15, 5. And Y here, it's 10, 10. Because I need this space. So now I like to calculate this DSX. All right. DSX and then DSY. All right. All right, so when the coalition is zero, uh, the ds x or y is zero, okay? So it's zero everywhere whenever the coalition is empty set. So when the coalition is one, sort of player one alone, so ds x is what? vs, which is five, minus the sum. Under xi, it's 15. So it's min a five minus 15, so minus 10. All right, well, clearly this is not deficit. This is a beautiful thing. Uh, under y, however, it is minus five. Okay. Now, um, what about the coalition two? Well, under both x and y, oh, under x, it is uh, five minus five, zero. And then under y, it's minus five. And then the grand coalition under both x and y, they're both zero. Okay, so now I am going to create D of X. So D of X is basically um, the highest uh, complaint. Well, here the complaints are, you know, either zero or, or negative. So there's no real complaint. Fine. Um, so it's zero, 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 minus 10. It really doesn't matter which zero is the first zero. Okay. And then D of Y is what? Uh, 0, 0, minus 5, minus 5. Okay, so that's it. This is how we create those deficit vectors given uh, the payoff vectors x and y. Good. I hope we are now on the same page. Now let's jump on to a, a bit more complicated part. Now we're going to define a lexicographic ordering over all payoff vectors as follows. All right. The payoff vector x is better than y if and only if there exists some player i in between 1 to 2 to the power n such that, I mean, it's not player, I'm sorry, there is some number uh, in this index here 
i from 1 to 2 to the power n such that the complaints are the same all the way up to this index i. I mean index 1, index 2, index 3, all the way up to index i minus 1, including i minus 1. The complaints are exactly the same, but at that index i, the complaint under y is higher than complaint under x. Huh. So what are we doing here? Uh, a little bit of intuition maybe. So remember, for any payoff vector, we created uh, sort of a, 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 an order of complaints. So these are each coalition's complaint, you know, how much deficit they have. It's like, well, I'm not happy with what I am receiving given that uh, what's my coalition is worth. And so that's my complaint. I, I am unhappy about it. So I rank the highest complaint from the highest complaint to the lowest complaint and then compare two deficit vectors in a lexicographic way. How so? Well, I look at the highest possible complaint, the highest in each dx and dy. The highest are the same. Okay, then move on to the second highest. The second highest, the second highest complaints, the same. Move on to the third highest. So here i is three. The third highest, huh? The complaint under x is higher than complaint under y. Hmm. So if complaint under x is higher than complaint uh, complaint under y i'm sorry if the complaint under x is higher than complaint under y what does that mean then i say here the uh, payoff vector y is preferred to x okay um here i am sorry using a different notation uh, maybe i should have used uh, instead of x y i should i should call them a b um, sorry, um, maybe I should, right? So let's call them A and B. I mean, this is a generic definition, all right? Um, so be careful about it. So this is B, this is A, if you like. So this is AI, this is BI, and so this is DA and DB, okay? And so again, I, I compared the highest complaints. If they're the same, go move to the second highest complaint. And if they're the same, move to the third highest. And then in the third highest, now I have a difference. They're not the same. Uh, this payoff vector A leads to a higher complaint. All right. Remember, negatives are always good. Positives are bad. It's real complaint. So that means this payoff vector A is causing more trouble than B. All right, that's the idea. So therefore, B is a better payoff vector. That's the idea, that's the intuition. All right, so B is uh, at least, I mean, better than A. All right, so that's the idea. That's how we define this lexicographic order. I hope we are on the same page. As I said, in this example, B is better than A. And if you remember, B is the fair one and A is the unfair one, okay? So it makes sense. Well, the final definition. A nucleus of a game G is defined as follows. So it's a set of payoff vectors. So it's denoted by NG. It's a set of payoff vectors X where X is better than Y for all payoff vectors Y. All right, meaning in this game, there is no payoff vector. Remember, payoff vectors can't be arbitrary. It has to be individually rational and it has to be feasible. So there is no, so if, if a payoff vector is in the nucleus, well, then there is no other payoff vector uh, which is going to be better than X uh, in the lexicographic sense. All right, so here, obviously, one problem Calculating the nucleus is very complicated business, especially if the number of players is huge. In this example, um, I think we can calculate it, all right? Um, but here, I did not calculate. I just picked two random payoff vectors, A and B. 
what I just show you is that B is better than A. So that means, according to this description or definition, A is definitely not in the uh, nucleus. All right. So I don't know if there is any uh, payoff vector in the nucleus, uh, whether it is B or not. Uh, that I don't know. I didn't show it. But all, all I can show here is basically, I'm sorry, all I can conclude here at least is that A is definitely not in the nucleus. And the nucleus, again, is, is a nice solution concept because, once again, its idea is to minimize the highest possible complaint. All right? Um, so, nucleus is a nice solution concept which gives a unique outcome for super additive games. All right, so if your game is a super additive, for example, the ice cream game is a super additive game, so it has a unique outcome. Hmm. So for the ice cream example, we can actually calculate the nucleus. But again, it's, uh, in, in terms of um, uh, computation, it's complicated because there are too many um, you know, uh, system of, uh, the, the system of linear equations is very large. Okay, it always exists. That's a nice thing. I mean, there always exists one element in this set and it always lies in the core if the core is non-empty, obviously. I mean, if there's no element in the core, oh, well, I mean, but if, there, if the core is non-empty, well, then nucleus is definitely in the core. So, you know what? The best idea would be characterize all the payoffs in the core for any given game, calculate all the payoffs in the core. Some games it's unique, all right? Some games uh, maybe, you know, many. And then out of all these, calculate the nucleus. Uh, that would probably make the complications, uh, sort of the calculations easier. But that's the idea of nucleus as a solution concept. I hope that was clear.